Good morning, guys. If it is morning where you are, it certainly is a beautiful morning here in Pomona, California, and it is time for the first Pomona Reptile Super Show in two years. It was canceled last year for obvious reasons, but this year it's back and it's gonna be better than ever. There's more vendors, there's more people through the door. It is gonna be an awesome expo, so I cannot wait to get into this building and check out all the amazing vendors and all the amazing reptiles and amphibians that are under one roof here at the Pomona Reptile Super Show. I'm also looking really forward to doling out a whole new batch of Rattle On Awards, the very first of 2022. So let's get in there and tour the Pomona Reptile Super Show. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. So one of the things a lot of other videos that are shot here at Pomona don't show you is what it's like out front of the expo. This place is just like a little mini carnival. I mean, look at this, it's just like a fair. You got hot dog on a stick, draft beer depot. Why is that not crowded? But you got hamburgers, pastrami, whatever over here. Look at this line over here. And you got just food vendors all the way down here. People are hanging out out here. This is what I really love about Pomona. And this is in the middle of January. If this was in Minnesota, where I'm from, man, people would be miserable, frozen, frozen booger sickles hanging out of their noses. This is really awesome. This is one of the things that I love about coming to the Pomona Reptile Expo. Lacking, Dave. Brian's recovering from an illness. No, you have work to do. You're just gonna point your camera at things all day. Call that work. I, his eyes are closed. You right? could be over here eating chips. Instead, you're standing back there holding your camera like a doofus. <laughs> You know guys, aside from doing the Rattle On Awards at these expos, there's some tables here that have the coolest stuff and I always love stopping by and seeing all the cool stuff that they have. So my friend Mike Roscoe at the Reptile Shop, man, he and I have been friends for years and he always has the most amazing reptiles at this show. Wait until you guys see what Mike has here at his booth at the Reptile Shop. Mike, you know, Every time I see you, you have something absolutely amazing, and man, you just do not disappoint. Look at this black-tailed Kribo. It's head exanthic too. Het exanthic to boot. That is an, a gorgeous, impressive snake. Look at this. Man, is that beautiful. And if this isn't beautiful enough, over here, we've got an indigo that is just absolutely amazing. What's up, buddy? Wow, you're gorgeous. You look just like my tattoo. So if that Kribo wasn't cool enough, look what we got here. So this is a VPI IMG Jungle Aztec possible head blood. That is going to be an amazing snake with that IMG. I mean, as the snake gets older and older, it's going to get darker and darker with that IMG. But it still could retain some pattern with those other genes in it. It definitely will. It'll definitely have this, this, this foundational pattern that you see here will stay, but it'll definitely change color. I think that this will turn a little bit more colorful and red. Right. And I think the rest of it will darken up and then you'll see this nice pop in the color, the contrast in the tan. That is gonna be amazing. Yeah. I kind of hope you don't sell that because I want to come back in a couple of years and see how this turns out. Yeah, me too. That's why I put a dumb price on it. There you go. What do you got it at? It's $10,000. $10,000. All right, so if that ball wasn't cool enough, look at this one. So this is very similar. So this is the same animal as the other one. The difference is this is Motley instead of Aztec. Gotcha. And this one's het, possible Het Anary instead of possible Het Blood. But look at how dark this one is compared to the other one. And it's one gene off. One gene off. One gene off one gene from off the one we just the, saw. The difference from Aztec to Motley. Motley IMGs are typically the darkest IMGs. Correct, yep. And well. Aztecs seem to have the best pattern Exactly. Overall. They hold the best pattern, I should say. So, so this will end up being more of a solid color down the road. 
but right now it's still pretty rad looking. Mike, you always have the most amazing stuff here. Thanks, I just man. had to stop by your booth and check it out. And again, I, never disappoints. I appreciate you, man. Cool, brother, man. Cool. <laughs> Thank Woo! you, brother. Appreciate you. Look at this amazing display. This is awesome. Uh, Jimmy, was it a, a rough year for you? <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Things get hard, you know? Well, look at this. I mean, these could be ball python morphs. You got the Dorito, you got the Funyun, you got the Frito but morph. You get the ranch morph too, you know. That's right. Morph That's morph. right, right. Yeah. Uh, I hope next year goes better for you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't be a Pomona Reptile Super Show without Tony from Tony's Geckos and Frazzle. I absolutely love this gecko. Everybody loves this gecko. He's going strong and always changing. Like I said, the latest was his eye that changed. Yeah, look at that. His eyes are different from the last time I saw him. Yeah, he has one phantom eye. Look at that. One dark eye and one light eye. This gecko gets better and better every time I see him. That is an amazing gecko. So uh, next time I come to uh, Vegas, we got to go fishing yeah, again. Yeah, definitely. That was that the was greatest great. fishing trip ever. Was, I'm coming back to Vegas. We're you know doing what? it again. Sounds good. You know I got you. All right, brother. All right, we'll see you soon. Point. Right over here is Gargoyle Queen Reptiles, and I'm going to go over, and I'm going to talk with Kylie because a lot of my gargoyle geckos came from her, and she has some of the most amazing gargoyle geckos you guys have ever seen. All right, guys, take a look at this gargoyle gecko here at Gargoyle Queen Reptiles. That is one of the most amazing gargoyle geckos I've ever seen. So this is out of one of my super blotched pairings. We're working on extreme color, extreme variation, and a little bit of this like interesting tiger patterning. The bands yeah, come look at all that. the way along the back, down to the belly. <laughs> so it almost wraps around the whole belly of the gecko. So we're working on adding head color um, and saturation. So this has got really nice deep color, deep reds on it. All right, so that is the most unique gargoyle I've ever seen. Have we proved this pattern genetic? Mm, not quite yet. Not quite no, yet. This is the oldest one I have like this, but I've got quite a few that are younger. So this is one of the younger ones. <laughs> yeah. so you can start to see that tiger pattern coming through. <laughs> How did you develop this line? Uh, you know, it's probably just partially dumb luck. Yeah, yeah just, as is breeding, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, you breed high color, high color, you continually form um, pairings that are unrelated as best you can and go for more color, more color, and then you get something kind of funky every once in a while. You sure do, and that is, wow, that is as funky as they get. <laughs> so these guys typically start off a little bit more on the orangish side, and as they grow, their red starts to come in and saturate and really kick in. That is incredible. You know, I gotta say, you are doing so much innovative work with gargoyles and crested geckos. It's always a pleasure to see you here at the show. But man, every time I come here and see you and see your table here, yeah. you've got something amazing to show us. And man, did you did not disappoint this time. <laughs> I wow. brought some just for you, Dave. Well, thank you. No, those are amazing. So, you know, the gargoyles that I have from you, they thrive, they're doing just wonderfully, they're beautiful. You're the person to go to for gargoyle geckos Yay. for sure. And here is Garrett Hartle about to do something stupid. I don't have enough coffee. You're gonna have to comment below what you want to see me do in the next video, and I'll do it. How about that? I, I can't figure it out. Unless you got an idea, Dave. That you're not doing something stupid? Yeah, what should I do? stupid. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> or comment below, I'll get you next time. Hi, I'm William, and I'm a, just starting, a, I'm a starting breeder of California king snakes. Fantastic. And this is our fifth snake, he is a High white California king snake. That is gorgeous. Look at that. That is extreme. And his high name white. is Oreo. And his name is <laughs> Oreo. So how many king snakes do you have already? Uh, currently we have five. Five. And so you're gonna specialize in California king snakes. Yes, California king, snake king snakes. And eventually I want to get into bull snakes and all that. That is fantastic. Well, I'm glad that you're starting out with California yeah, king snake morphs because a lot of people get into it 
and California king snakes aren't their first choice. Yeah, because of course the the big thing is they're bitey. That's what most people think. Uh, but they're not. They're not. If, they're not. If they're socialized, they can be your best friend. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world Thank with you. your breeding. That is awesome. Have an amazing day. You too. All right. So, what's your name? Sienna. Your name's Sienna. Okay, great. And what did you get here? Okay, so I have a banana mystic ball python. Whoa. And so now you came up to me and asked me if you should get a ball python or a hognose snake. And I gave you the pros and cons of each of them and you chose this really awesome ball python. Why did you pick a ball python over a hognose snake? Um, because I think we wanted something that was a little less wiggly that I could kind of hang out with and he's super chill so I think that's why we picked him. I think you made a really good decision. That is an awesome snake. And this is your first ball python, right? This is my first ball python, yeah. Well, you made an awesome decision. Enjoy your first snake. That is Thank awesome. You. So this is Saul. Saul and Evelyn. Evelyn, and what do you got here? Uh, red tail, jungle. Well, this is a red tail jungle. Mm -hmm. Look at that boa. That is just amazing. Look at that pattern on him. That is a really cool boa. And what did you get? You got a retic boa. Yes, retic boa. <laughs> That is a, a beautiful retic. <laughs> oh yeah. That is nice. So is this your uh, first retic? No. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Is this your 200th retic? How about? All right. No. All right. Good. Good. So you know what you're doing. It's all good. Yeah, it's no, all no. good. We know what we're doing. All right. You guys got some very cool snakes there. Thank you. Enjoy the show. We're That's so awesome. Happy to see you. Right, right on. on. Right along. All right, guys, so it is time to give out the very first Rattle On Awards of 2022. You know, at reptile expos like this, there is so much variety. So when it comes to giving the Rattle On Award for the best booth and the best new innovative product. This is a first, because here at Tamura Designs, they're actually gonna win both in the same booth. Wait until you see this. So this is Dale, and you are not only the owner yes. of Tamura Designs, but all of these enclosures are your design. My design. So all these enclosures are basically everything I hated about cages that were sold out there and my heart and soul is in these cages that I made all the improvements. So all of these enclosures are all different designs and you basically have the kind of the PVC front, but on these, you went with the clear so that you could actually see the bioactive, the bioactive actually happening and that is a really cool and innovative yes. idea. And nobody's ever doing it, so I thought of why not? Absolutely. I mean. Look at this, you can actually see the layers in here and it really opens up the enclosure. You can basically see everything in the enclosure. And not only that, but I love the design that you have of your enclosure. You don't yes. just have a couple of tables with these out. Yes. I mean, look at this, we got AstroTurf down here, we got a podium over here, we've got this huge banner. I mean, you really designed your booth with a lot of Creativity. forethought and creativity yeah. exactly so all right so we've seen the clear front ones let's see some other designs here sure. this is a 48 24 48 uh, basically mallers is one of the chameleon species that I took in consideration in trying to breed them because I like them so much right so I built these enclosures to satisfy my mallers there you go so I bred them twice um, supposedly I'm the only one in the US that that has them and bred them twice. So not only are you a cage builder and designer, but mm -hmm. you built them and designed them with the individual reptile in mind. Exactly. Do the background murals come with the unit? Yes, it does. So the background mural is not a sticker. It's actually printed directly to the PVC. It's printed, oh wow. Yes. So that's not gonna bubble and pop not, and get moisture behind it. The light hood comes with three T5 fixtures with the basking bulbs and humidifier bar. And then we do a, actually an autonomous full control computer control unit that wow. controls lighting, controls uh, dust to dawn dimming, and uh, temperatures and humidity. That is amazing. Yeah. 
But now for people like me who keep a lot of crested geckos yeah. and a lot of gargoyle geckos, I want to check out these over here. Okay, so these here, I consider them condos. So this is a four condo, three condo. They're all in one in, in unit. They fit on a 48-inch baker's rack. And then and down they, here. These are your 21 and a half. And uh, this one here, we mainly use it for lychees. And then we have this poop deflector here that keeps the poo inside the enclosure. When they poo, um, it usually slips down onto the side of the plastic. Oh. So we, I invented this poop deflector. Look at that. So this is a poop guard for lychees. Yeah. This is incredible. So completely waterproof, yep. completely uh, able to be bioactive. Yep. And the screens here, if you wanted a solid screen later down the road for a different species, you could unscrew this and we could send you a solid top. To hold in all that humidity. Yep. Fantastic. And then we have these uh, black things here, basically for your mister. So if you were going to use a mist king, you pop it out and then your nozzle goes right in. There you go. You have taken reptile keeping to the next level with these enclosures. Thank you. And I think that these are going to be one of the most popular enclosures out there. Awesome. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. All the best of luck to you. These are amazing. Thank you. So one of the things I get excited about is seeing innovative new products like here at Tamura Designs. These enclosures are really going to take reptile keeping to a whole new level. And that's why I'm giving Tamura Designs the very first Rattle On Award of 2022. Now, not only for the best booth here, but also for the best new reptile product. All right, guys, now that I've just spent a lot of money over at Tamura Designs buying some really awesome enclosures for my crested geckos and gargoyle geckos at home, it is now time to give out the Rattle On Awards for the best lizard here. And I found something absolutely incredible right over here. So this is a Rio Fuerte beaded lizard. They are relatives of our Gila monsters here in the United States, but these guys are found in Western Mexico and they get much bigger than our Gila monsters do here in the United States. But this isn't just a Rio Fuerte beaded lizard. This is actually a hypo. So this is actually a really rare morph for beaded lizards. But look at this big, beautiful lizard. And they are just so chill and so gentle. Man, they're just like little lap dogs, but this guy is actually venomous. This guy can deliver a very painful bite, but this guy was bred in captivity, raised in captivity, and he is just a honey of a lizard. Look at this guy. So the scientific name, Heloderma exasperatum, Heloderma means studded skin, and exasperatum means completely rough. And that is a perfect scientific name for this lizard. And you can see why these are called beaded lizards. Their skin is really bumpy with all these little beads. It kind of feels like you're rubbing your hand against pearls. So now that we've seen the adult, if you think that was incredible, wait till you see what the babies look like right over here. And this is what the ultra reels look like as babies here, but they're a little flighty. This one's being sold so we can take him out and take a look at him. Look at that. Look at those blacks and yellows. All that purple will turn yellow as an adult. That is going to be an amazing looking adult. They're amazing as babies. But man, these are cool. He's getting a little agitated here. There's a crowd behind the camera over here and he's getting a little bit nervous. So I'm going to not hang on to this guy very much longer and stress him out much longer than I need to. But I really wanted to show this guy off. And you can see why this guy wins the 2022 Pomona Reptile Super Show Rattle On Award for the best lizard here. All right, so now it's time to give the Rattle On Award for the best snake here. This was really, really difficult because there are a ton of amazing snakes here, but wait until you see what I found over at Brian Bodie Reptiles. And you guys know that I'm a sucker for pides. And when I pick these award winners, I look for unique things. I look for unique genetics. I look for really rare snakes and really cool snakes. But every once in a while, I will find something so cool like this guy. This is a pied, but is it a pied? So if you look at this snake, where's your head there, buddy? If you look at this snake's head, 
That's not the head of a pie. Look at that head stamp and pies. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. So if you notice that head stamp, that is not the head stamp of a normal pie. That light part in the center, normal pies really don't have that light spot, but I mean, look at the obvious difference between this and any other pied. And so at home, I've got pieds that have these black spots on them. Some pieds have them, some pieds don't, but these aren't just black spots. There's actually pigment within those black spots. That coupled with this head stamp, we could be looking at a brand new pied morph here. So this is Brian Bodie from Brian Bodie Reptiles. So now you didn't produce this snake, you picked it up from somewhere else. Yeah, I picked it up and it was born pretty much just as you see him. And after six sheds, he hasn't changed. Wow. He's been just like this after six sheds after he's out of the egg. I bred him to his daughter and I've also bred him to other animals that I have. I'm guessing that this is a new morph of pied. I'm really hoping so. That's why I took it to Clown and another pied and to his daughter. Hopefully this year with the daughter will prove out that uh, it is uh, indeed a recessive genetically past rate. This could be amazing. I hope so. So you can see why I'm giving this snake the January 2022 Pomona Reptile Super Show Rattle On Award for the best snake here. All right, guys, so that is the end of the very first Reptile Expo of 2020, the Pomona Reptile Super Show. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.